Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 125, we'll take a look at how to manage broad bounded contexts. And of course in this lesson, I'll explain what I mean about a broad bounded context and why we may end up with those within a microservices ecosystem. You can find Software Architecture Monday on my website, developer2architect.com, by going to the Lessons link in the menu. Here, you can get a catalog of all of my lessons, a description of each, reference links that I have within the video, and also you can watch the video from within my website or on YouTube. And these are entirely free, no need to register. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, but you can also go here as well. And as a matter of fact, most of the material from Software Architecture Monday comes from these two books that I wrote with Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and also our latest book, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Let's talk about broad bounded contexts and managing a bounded context. Now, one of the things we try to do is to form something called a database per service pattern. And as a matter of fact, when we talk about a bounded context, that bounded context includes all of the functionality of that particular service along with its data. In other words, it owns the data structures, the data itself, and all of the functionality. And the idea of a bounded context allows us to say, I can control change within my data because I'm the only one that has to change. If other people end up needing that data, they can go and ask for it. I can send it back through a different contract. And this concept of a bounded context is absolutely necessary and essential in microservices. However, how feasible is the database per service pattern? Oh, a lot of times we try to, try to strive for it, uh, but most of the time we end up using something called a data domain pattern, where because the data and the associated artifacts within that data are all interrelated, we may have foreign key constraints, data integrity constraints, there may be certain views or even heaven forbid, stored procedures, uh, still down in the database. Uh, which means that if we are sharing data within microservices, which is absolutely, absolutely possible, and in some cases necessary, uh, we necessarily start to form broader bounded contexts. For example, here's my shipping bounded context. I happen to have the data, but for various reasons, I have good justification for still having three separate shipping services. Those three services plus the data form a broad bounded context. Notice here the profile as well as wish list are nice, tight, well-formed bounded contexts, but payment is not. Notice we have four different payment services, but we all share the same data. And finally, a comments service. So what I want to really talk about in this lesson is how to manage these broad bounded contexts. And when I say manage, it's knowing what services are related within the same bounded context. You see, if I apply a change to this data table here or this database, I have to make sure that I make changes to all services using that data. So. The question is, well, how do I make sure I've got all the services? And that's really what I wanted to show you. This is a technique uh, that I use and have used uh, to manage uh, the data domain pattern. Let me show you what that looks like, and then I'm going to show you some ways of actually leveraging it. Um, so I'm going to show you examples in both Java and also C Sharp. But what I like to use when I'm using Java are identity annotations. And so here's an annotation called bounded context. It does absolutely nothing, folks. However, it does take in a value. That value happens to be an enum of all the available types of bounded context names that I have in my ecosystem. And as a matter of fact, here's the corresponding C sharp. I would use an identity attribute or a tag attribute, custom attribute here, 
um, using the same thing. The code doesn't really do anything. However, it allows me to mark on a particular service what its bounded context is programmatically external from any sort of a wiki based documentation. As a matter of fact, uh, let me show you how it's used, and then I want to show you some tools you can actually write to manage your bounded context. So let's say I have two services here, a credit card service and a gift card service. Now these are two classes uh, that form the API within each of those services. And as a matter of fact, I have a separate identity annotation or attribute, and let's call this service entry point. This is one attribute or annotation I tend to use a lot. What this does is it identifies the single class in my microservice that ends up representing the entry point. And this is usually the RESTful API uh, coming in from an API layer, basically, and that's, that's a good target. Um, now, here, what I say is bounded context. And so I'll use either the identity attribute or, or uh, identity annotation in this case to say this bounded context is of type payment. This belongs in the payment. I'll do the same thing with the gift card. Here's the service entry point for this class which represents a separate service. And here I enter the bounded context here of payment as well. And what this does programmatically using these marker or tag annotations or attributes allows me to really tie these services together knowing that if I make a change within that bounded context, these are all the list of services that I need to worry about and possibly retest. Now the C-sharp version, again, would just simply use custom attributes in this case. Uh, now, let me actually show you how this can actually be useful. This gives you developer documentation but I can also write fairly simple command line interface tools uh, using code walking to basically go through the Git repo and start walking through all the code looking for these associations. And let me show you an example. So I'm going to write a shell script, uh, bounded context, and here's how this can be useful. So I'm going to say bounded context dot shell script, list all the bounded context, hit enter, and there's all five bounded contexts that so far I have in my system. Payment, shipping, wishlist, comments, and profile. Now those, again, may represent individual services or multiple services within that bounded context. And let me show you how useful this could be. So I'm going to check, and let me type in here, a bounded context for payment. What services are associated with the payment bounded context? I hit enter, and notice there are in fact four. So if I'm making a change to one of the tables, I now have the scope of what services I should be looking at. I don't have to look at any other services. These four I need to be concerned about for potential queries into that database or updates. And so this is just kind of a convenient way utilizing these annotations and custom attributes of not only providing that developer documentation, but also being able to leverage it like this to give us programmatic real-time information about our microservices ecosystem. And so this has been Lesson 125, Managing a Broad Bounded Contexts. And so just a few tips on, on just easy ways of being able to manage these without uh, looking at stale documentation. And so um, hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned in two more weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.